Hey everyone, uh, I just want to say uh, thanks for watching my video and uh, um, what this video is, is can we calculate pi or basically any other function uh, with just switches and a not function and an or function? Can, can that be done? And the answer is yes. So I wanted to prove this to myself because I kind of wanted to understand the very basics of what is needed to do some calculations. Uh, this is part of a AI thing that I'm working on. And to, to fully understand it, I wanted to, uh, you know, just try it myself. You know it's possible because a computer turns on and it's all binary, so it can do all these functions. Um, but I want to do it from scratch. So I built a program and that basically uses nothing. The only thing it uses is a not, an or, and, and some switches. And that's it. Um, really we map the switches together. You know, we, you know, we, we draw lines like an equals sign. Uh, so, so we do do that. So that's what uh, this third one is. But that could be kind of put in or not, depending on how you think about it. Um, but f to prove uh, pi and divide and multiply could all be done. Um, I didn't use uh, a lot of things. Um, true is not used in here at all. Uh, false isn't. I generate my own false and my own true. Uh, we start out with switches in an unknown state. And I use a random thing to put them in an unknown state. That's pretty much the only thing that's not true or false is the random function. And uh, the, this program uses no loops of any kind. So it doesn't use do, while, for, go to, or whatever. Uh, um, there's no statements. Um, well, actually there are statements. Uh, Maybe I'll get to that later, but there, there doesn't really need to be statements. It could all be one block code. Um, uh, no uh, if, then, or else are used, uh, So, but I do generate my own uh, based off of just or and nots, and no plus multiply divide are used. But again, I create my own based on um, the not and or, and I kind of build up from there. So it's it's really kind of interesting that you know we could do these things with just or and not, um, and you can also use XOR as a single gate that can perform both of these. But I won't get into that. Um, but let me go ahead and show it to you. So um, this program, I'll make it available. Uh, through GitHub, um, probably some other, maybe some other places, so you can download the code if you like. Uh, so there's three parts here. There is the, um, the the program itself, and this is basically the testing program that tests everything. Um, there are the actual functions here. So these are all the functions that are slowly built up. This is most of the work right here. And these are some data types. So really, I'm just allowed to use, you know, a bool, uh, which is a true or false. So in here, we have to build up our own data types. So we use uh, um, create an int, which is based off of eight bools, um, Boolean values. You use it, make an int. So this was an unsigned int, and then an int, and we keep going down, and we get into int 16, int 32, thing, and things like that. There's really no functionality in here. This is really just mapping bits around to different places. Um, so that is the data types. Uh, the next section is. Um, uh, that was all three sections. So, um, so I will go through the, the functions now. 
the functions class kind of shows how things are built up to do things. So um, I start off here with a get unknown switch. So this here is really the only thing outside of um, or or not that I do use. Um, and it's really just because you can't use in C sharp, you can't use a bool, boolean without initializing it to something first. And to show that we're, it doesn't really need to be initialized to a particular value, I'm just filling it with a random uh, variable. So, so here we're going to create a true. So we're getting a, um, some value and we're doing a um, an or. So we're taking the not of a and a and we're doing or on it. That would always be true. Um, likewise, we get some you know, random boolean value, and we do an, an and on that. Did I say and up here? I meant or. Um, but we do an and up here, so we do a not on that, and then um, a not on the not one. Sorry. Something like that. <laughs> and uh, we get, um, ours will always be false, because you know, this, both of these can't always be true, period. We could also just do not of true, too, to generate false as well. So we build up from there. These, these ones are just for convenience. Um, instead of writing the full word true function and false, I just use T and F, um, their properties, to make it uh, cut the code a little nicer to, to look at. Um, so uh, next thing is or. This doesn't really need to be in here because I mostly use that. But if I use, I could throughout this whole program use this or instead of this function, and then everything would flow through this this function here and this not here. Um, but I do use not and or throughout. But I could replace everything with just these. Um, that's kind of what these represent. Um, I build an and here. Um, and this is just some logic stuff um, that just how ands work. So ands with multiple um, operands in them, um, a nor statement, a uh, xor, xor, xor. I'm sorry. Uh, if oh here's the if statement. So basically, you can do an if statement like like so. Like if a is true then return this one, but if a is false, then return this one. So here was if a is true, so it's going to be true. So this one's not going to matter at this point because this will always be false. So and then we grab this one, you do the or on it and return it. So that's kind of an if, that's how we create an if for Boolean, but we do more below for uh, some other things. Um, and then there is the is equal. Um, so um, this is how to test if two values are equal uh, without using the you know the double equal sign, you know, like that. Um, so this is how to test if they're equal. Um, I don't even know if I use that, but it's just kind of a proof thing. Um, uh, assign. Um, this didn't really work out. I need to remove that. It was just. I was trying to get away without using the equal sign too, but we do need to use the equal sign, I think. But anyway, I'll skip that one. So here we're starting to get a little higher math. Um, we have and um, functions. Um, and I'm sorry, uh, add add functions. Here we have add functions. Uh, here we get into a little higher math. Uh, we use add. And we start out with just this simple two-bit add. Uh, most of these will have a, a carry out um, function, which is actually the, the bool return here. And then the R1 and R0 are the results. So we do can carry in. And some even can have a carry. I'm sorry, these are carry out. And some do have a carry in as well. So um, like this next one here, this would basically add this one plus this, plus this, and return it to here. And if it over carries, it will add it. It will return that carry. Uh, this is kind of a common thing that is just 
used in uh, programming. Um, so that's why I'm just stuck with that. Um, so there's some bigger ads here with bigger bits. Um, or, and here we get all the way up to, you know, unsigned in eight. We do more ad functions that get longer and longer. We use basically the, the shorter ones to um, generate the longer ones. Um, and we you know, keep going and then eventually we get up to unsigned int 32 and I think below we have a int as well for add. Uh, we have some other functions here. We have an increment. Um, we could just add one but this is slightly more efficient. Um, this just increments um, by one. Um, this is a test so instead of using greater than sign like if a is greater than B we could do if greater and then a B a comma B to test if something is greater because we're not allowed to use greater or less than um, in this example here this program um, so continuing on um, so this will test for greater so if something is greater it will return true um, or you could just do the not of that and that would be less than um, uh, down here is greater or equal to. Really, this is almost identical, except this um, this one has a false. So eventually, if it all matches, it returns false. This one, eventually, if it all matches, it returns true. So greater or equal. Uh, we have another add. Here we start getting into shifts. A lot of these things were um, things that I kind of discovered a little later that, oh, when I do multiply and you know divide and things like that, I'm going to need some shifts and stuff and so th these were just a lot of these were just created later I just didn't quite just go in order um, they're not actually all quite in order I guess I could reorder these a little better but there's quite a lot of shifts um, shift is a com common thing uh, shifting by one is basically multiplying by two or dividing by two so uh, very common in low-level programming very efficient too on the GPU, and a shift two is um, is really just remapping the bits too. By the way, the only thing we do is um, is we do calculate an overflow. So if all the bits are one, um, anyway, I'm not gonna get into that right now, but that may not be inaccurate. But yeah, we do have a calculated overflow. We do return an overflow. Um, but yeah, so so if if all the bits are one and we shift left, then it would overflow. But I think this, we only need to test for the first bit though. I think I was just copying things, getting a little excited. But uh, anyway, so we have the shift functions. Going down here more, we have sh uh, more shifts, lots of shifts. I'm just going to go through. I actually built a little program that just generates these shifts because <laughs> there are so many of them. Um, we have another and um, that I need. Uh, so basically, it returns one, kind of ands a bit against a whole well, in 32. These are all things. That I kind of discovered I needed later. Not all of them are used. Okay, here's a more fancy if. Um, this if, instead of before, it was, you know, if this is true, return this one, this one, then if this is false, then return C. Um, this is similar, but instead it returns all of B, um, which is now 30 bits, 32 bits, and all of C, which is 32 bits as well. Um, so, yeah. Um, here's another if with the int version, the other one was an unsigned in. So um, we're going to test if, we have to create some ability to test if uints and ints are equal, so we do that here. And I'm basically just testing every single bit. Um, if, if any of them are not equal, so this will return a 1 if they're not equal. And then, therefore, this will return false. I think I just discovered another little error looking through here. 
in that if all of these are off, <laughs> they would also return true. So there's a little bug. <laughs> But everything seems to work because I never, I guess, tested that. Um, unsigned with mask. I mean, I'm sorry, equal with mask. I never really, uh, I, I used this for a bit, but then I didn't need it anymore. Um, just as another equal, but with the mask functionality. Um, yeah. Uh, R2 you ints equal. Um, okay, so here we start getting into the negative stuff. Um, which is a little compliment, a little compl complicated. I almost said compliment because it's stuck in my head. But we can use uh, two two's complement. There's a lot of different methods on what a negative number is and how it's kept in bits. Um, two's complement is one method of doing it. There's also like I think one. Um, one's complement and then some other ones. But one's complement and two's complement are pretty popular, mostly two's complement. Um, and it just makes sense because a lot of addition and division are a lot easier using two's complement. So I went with the two's complement representation of what a negative number is in terms of bits. So, um, so to, to do a negative number, um, this is, I'm not going to go through it, but this is how we would do that. Um, absolute value, we would just, um, if it's positive, basically the first bit is 1, then we would negate it and then get, you know, that would turn into a positive. If not, then it's just return it. Um, add, um, some more adds again, uh, subtract. Subtract is really just add. It's kind of an interesting thing I've kind of learned recently too is his add is really just subtract um, but you're just you know flipping the negative on one and then adding them two together um, so that's what that is negative or there's another subtract which is basically an add but you negate one of them first um, and also multiply is really very similar to divide too they're kind of almost opposites in a way as well as kind of how add is different than negative or add is different than subtract so anyway kind of going off topic there um, so next we have multiply um, this is a, a multiply it's actually not too complicated um, going on we got another multiply for unsigned int I mean for signed int, uh, we have a, now we get to the divide. Um, this one I have some history with. Um, I was, thought I invented something, you know, a new way of doing it where you could do a divide in a single clock cycle, but it was already there, so I didn't really invent anything, I don't think. But anyway, this doesn't actually use that, but and I got Scott on that topic, but anyway, this is just a a way to do it with uh, single statements. It's a, more, as you can tell, it's more complicated than the um, if statement. But by the way, you could do a division in a single statement, aka clock cycle, um, if you wanted to. It would just take a lot of circuitry, and the circuitry would take a lot of time for the electrons to flow through that long path of wires so that's I think that's why they take multiple clock cycles and current CPUs um, inverse uh, so this is just you know one divided by something um, yeah, going back to what I said earlier uh, it's kind of interesting that you know multiply is or or you know add really just includes subtract it's just you're negating it first and um, multiply is is kind of you know or dividing I should say is is really just multiplying but you're inversing one first really you know it's it's kind of um, this is kind of what I'm trying to understand is what core functions make up math and which ones you can't live without and divide you can live without subtract you can live without 
Um, they're not key functions. They're they're uh, um, convenient functions, but they're not core functions. You can always inverse one, then multiply them together, um, and then subtraction. You can you know uh, negate one and then add them together. Same same thing as that would be the same thing as subtract or yeah divide. Um, going on. Um, oh, so that's that's divide, and then that was a little complicated. And then we finally get to pi. So pi, um, I, this is the only function that I really didn't know how to do on my own. Um, so I kind of cheated. But here's a reference to, you know, just a way of where I got it. Um, it's using this, uh, don't know how to pronounce that, but that series. Um, so it's just, just kind of an infinite series here that goes on. Uh, I rewrote it in this format here uh, for better precision, uh, but but yeah, this, it's pretty much the same thing. You're just dividing this by two, dividing this by two, and making this a one um, for all of those. But this is uh, how I calculate pi. So this one is a little different than the others in that pi goes on forever, and really this would go on forever to calculating all of pi. So here we just calculate the first 32 bits of pi, uh, but we could go on forever and calculate all the bits of pi, but that would take forever. So um, anyway, uh, this is the observation. Whereas the other ones, this one I could have kept going forever and the other ones not. Um, one other thing here is no loops are used. Uh, so if we did do loops, um, this could settle down to just, you know, be a lot smaller code base. Instead, it has to be you know, unwrapped or unraveled. I forgot how it's called. Um, we have to basically unravel the loop. Um, so that's why this goes quite far here to get to the 32 bits. Um, but proving to myself that we really don't need, you can do anything you want. You really don't need, you know, um, do statements, while statements for go to. These are convenient things for us programmers. Um, I'm not 100% positive on this, so this is just kind of my guess and feeling. But. Um, yeah, we don't really need these. Uh, really, all we need is is the switches, the knots, and the ors. But let me, before I switch topics too much, um, let me switch back. Uh, so this is the end. So pretty much what we're doing is, scrolling back up here, is we are just going through this, oops, this right here. Um, we have our ongoing total. We have um, four, it's actually, this is four shifted way up um, to the top, um, but yeah, it's a shifted four. And then we have the starting, um, starts at one, three, and two. If you notice here, one, three, and two are our starting ones. And then we increment these outside ones by one, and then the inside one by two, outside one by one, inside by two, and we just go on and on, and then we, um, at each iteration, we just uh, do uh, the inverse of that and then subtract it or add it. It's kind of an alternating thing, if you notice. So it's subtract, then add, subtract, and then add. And it kind of like, you know, flows in to, you know, closes in on the, the value of pi, uh, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. Anyway, I won't go into that. Uh, so... Going back to here, so we have to do this quite a bit to get all 32 bits, which is actually pretty accurate. So if I go over here, um, this is the actual pi, right? Um, and we go up to about here. I don't show all of them, and so this is each iteration, but I don't show all the decimal places, I just show the end. But if you notice, they match up right here. See, they're all matching up. So really, we just go up to a precision 
of about that. Um, and that's where we stop. Uh, we probably keep going and get better precision um, up to a point, but we would run it. We couldn't keep going because all of our divisions up here were dropping off the, the remainder. So technically it's the bounds here, the low and the high bounds. See as we're I'm checking it occasionally. See, it's, this is hot, low and this is high after we do the addition. Um, and then right after we do the subtract, we're low. Right after we do the addition again, we're high. So eventually these bounds, um, they're not going to be great. And because the precision from the divide above is just going to eventually going to you know, keep compiling on itself and it's going to be out of range. So this wouldn't work forever to calculate pi. Um, but you could add more code to do it. But um, so that is that. And um, this down here is the original three. Um, this isn't a little piece of code I added at the end to make it correct. You know, because really you can just cheat and add some code there to make any number make it fit. But if you notice, we have this three at the end. So if we go back to the bottom, um, this is this three. So, but it's shifted all the way to the top too, like the four. Um, so, and this is all done for precision to try and keep as much precision. Um, I don't know why I have my answer there. That could probably be deleted. I'm gonna delete that right now, I think. Um, so this is what we get in decimal form. Um, but this is the actual. So this last decimal, the last two decimal places are off. But we could have kept going and probably got better. Um, actually, we couldn't because we were maxed out at 32 bits. Um, anyway. Uh, oh, one other note is that, you know, um, I'm storing this in binary. So this is kind of like a floating point at this point. Uh, um, you know, one, one, zero, zero. I'm, I'm just, there's a decimal there. So this isn't like a true floating point or integer. Um, it's kind of like a mix of the two, um, just to kind of prove though it's possible. Um, so let me go and run this. Um, and we will step through it real quick. Let me start and do F10 over here. Um, Okay, so just to, you know, we run software tests just to make sure things t work okay. Um, here we make sure false is false and true is true. Um, but that's not quite accurate, <laughs> discovering all these things, because this false is gathered from this false. So, of course, it's going to be accurate. So I just learned here that I can't use F10, so I'm gonna have to be putting breakpoints in here and clicking run because F10 is used by my screen capture software, so this will be fun. But uh, but here to prove false is false is, um, if we look at this F, it comes back as false and it's showing false. So this is a, a um, compiler false, so it is correct. And if we do the next one here, actually, I'm just going to do that. Continue, we got true. So this is just proving that true is true and false is false. Um, this assign function, we don't really need. Um, that never worked out, so I'm just gonna skip those. I'm just gonna go through that, so let's go continue. Um, here we test the and, the xor, the if. Actually, you know what? I'm not even going to go through all of these. I'm just going to run it and look at the results because we kind of already went through everything. But let me just scroll through here first. But here we do all the, the ands. I only do one test or two of each function, so this isn't a great, you know, test. It was just kind of a more proof of concept thing. So uh, I know this isn't a, you know, a great set of tests, but it's just something. Um, here we test equal, make sure 
equal, this should return false. Um, and we go down here, so this is another test of equal. Um, oh, so we, have, so we should test it, but anyway, I'll test that later. If they're all opposite, <laughs> you know, let's see if it fails. Um, anyway, because it should, it should not be equal, but I think because I'm using XOR, it would be fail. Just discovered that. Um, okay, so going down, subtract. So we go through these, and I can't remember where I have one commented out for some reason. But we go through all these, and we finally get to pi, and we just make sure pi is equal to something. So, and by the way, how I do these is these two are the inputs, and this is the answer. So, and then so I'm just making sure the answer is correct. Earlier on, I was just checking each bit by putting true and false in each one, but that was a lot of work, so I just created a new like unsigned in for this one, for example, and then just put all the TFs in there, T and Fs in there. Um, so I think that concludes it. Now let's run it, see what we get. And everything passes, which is great. Oh, I guess something failed. Um, but I didn't notice that. Uh, so yeah, so everything passes. Pi is correct. Uh, to the 32 decimal places. Just to kind of show you that, let's do this. And actually, let's go to the functions. Let's scroll all the way to the bottom here. Put a breakpoint. Run that. And we should stop there. We can expand this total. As you can tell, I've been debugging this. Uh -oh. And there are the 32 bits. So we should start off with true, true. Um, we got true, true, false, false, true. And so you can kind of compare them to up here. So anyway, the total does come out correct. So, um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so, but I will talk a little bit more on it, but you know, Maybe you want to jump out now. It, it's interesting to me that all of the science, all of the math, all of the physics can be done with just, you know, it, some switches, you know, just a bunch of light switches, if you will. A, a not function, which is basically turning the light switch on or turning it off, right? You need that anyway. And then an OR function, you know, two light switches are on, then turn on this one, right? So, and then the ability to map them together, like, uh, you know, when you turn on these two, it maps, you know, number 27 way out there, right? Hardwired, but map 27 or, or turn on 27, things like that. So I threw that in there, but that probably should be included as well. Uh, so, and that also brings up one thing too, in the compiler, it's, it's doing a lot, I'm, I'm generating new Boolean values, and the compiler is, is creating these for us. And it's doing all the mapping, but they are solid mappings, so that should be fine. Uh, so I just wanted to bring that up too. So, hmm. Like uh, if you, uh, you know, if you generate 10 switches and then you generate the 11th behind the scenes, it knows it's number nine is the offset. You don't really know that as a programmer. You just know you generated a new Boolean value. But behind the scenes, it knows it's the ninth offset. But it's always the ninth offset. So when it references in the future, it's hardwired to that ninth offset too. So, um, but yeah. Um, let's see, so I'm trying to think of anything else that I could think of. Let me think for a moment. So yeah, so it's just interesting that, you know, it's all of the math functions and everything, 
can be boiled down to just, you know, an XOR statement or an OR or a NOT. I mean, we could calculate the space shuttle's trajectory by just ORs and NOT statements. It's kind of wild, actually. It's, it's really, to me, you know, this is just me, my two cents, but we're as a community kind of, as as a people are kind of, you know, taking this, you know, yes and no and building it up. And then we create kind of these convenient functions that make a lot of sense, like multiply and divide and add and pi. And they're special numbers too, um, but they're all kind of built on they all could be built from, I should say, you know, just, you know, not an OR, or just an XOR function. Um, by the way, so XOR, if you could just use an XOR, and from that you could generate an OR statement, or you could generate a NOT statement, um, or an AND statement. So, really, you, you can just boil it down, you just need XOR, but to keep things simple again, just use a NOT and OR. Um, but I think that's about it. Um, hopefully, I wonder if anybody's actually still watching to the end here, but if you are, thanks. And uh, that's the end. Have a good one. Bye-bye.